Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, Twitter. Steve here at Logic FX Trading, and welcome to Daily FX Analysis. Uh, let's have a quick look at yesterday's uh, economic calendar. Australia, RBA, industry decision came in as forecast. In other words, they hadn't moved at all, but I have read that there are expectations for them to start moving soon, so we'll keep an eye on that. And the balance of trade in Canada came in at $1.94 billion Canadian dollars, which was a lot higher than forecast, so positive for the CAD. I imagine, I haven't looked at the charts this morning, guys, but uh, that should propel the CAD in the right direction. Possibly, this has been added to by the increase in the oil price, guys. Uh, on to today, interest rate decision, 2 a.m. for me, folks. As forecast, um, the New Zealand, uh, sorry, Reserve Bank in New Zealand have increased their interest rate or their cash rate, as they call it, up to 0.5% um, from 0.25%. Now, the big question we had yesterday was, and it was a bit of a dilemma, was it had this already been priced in? And it certainly looks as if it was because overnight the New Zealand dollar has dropped, guys. And we'll look at that in the charts in a moment. And this is, for anyone that's new to trading, this is something you need to be careful of. Um, I can remember years ago, you know, waiting for interest rate decisions and it came in as you expected. And instead of the uh, currency going long, it went short, often with the dollar. That's because it's already priced in, guys. And then um, the market's now looking at the next thing. So, so far as, say, the New Zealand uh, Aussie, which, which I had been calling long and then chickened out yesterday because of this decision, it went long. Why did it go long? Because the market's looking at Australia moving next, guys. So they're starting to price that in before it happens. Okay, so that's... Um, that's the economic calendar for today. Tomorrow's uh, inflation rate in Mexico and European monetary policy meeting accounts. But the big one for the week is going to be payrolls in the US. We'll have to see how that could end. Sorry, am I telling you uh, lies here? There, sorry, got ahead of myself. Uh, yeah, non-farm payrolls in the United States on Friday, guys. So that'll be another one to look forward to. We've had another move up in DXY or the dollar index. Um, let's see if it's uh, further supported by this at, uh, on Friday, folks. So that's what we need to look forward to this week as far as news is concerned. I just want to introduce this. We used to do a lot of uh, flipboard stories, guys, but they were kind of general and we picked through them. What I'm going to do now in this uh, daily FX analysis is we'll just look at those stories that are pertinent to... Um, you know, to FX rather than the general market, guys, which was what we were looking at before. And those recordings were up to an hour long, guys. It was just too long. So we're trying to keep these to about 20 minutes. So it's easier for you guys to pick your way through. Uh, this is just a report on New Zealand, what happened uh, overnight. New Zealand Central Bank hiked interest rates on Wednesday for the first time in seven years and signalled further tightening to come as it looks to get on top inflationary pressures and cool a red-hot red housing market. Now, Australia has a red-hot housing market as well, but they up to now they decided not to move, but I think they will start to move, guys. The 25 basis points uh, rate hike marks the start of a tightening cycle that had been expected to begin in August, but was delayed after an outbreak of coronavirus Delta variant and a lockdown that is continuing in its biggest city, Auckland. We talked about that yesterday, guys. The increase in cash rate to 0.5% by uh, RBNZ uh, had been forecast by all 20 economists polled by Reuters. Uh, the New Zealand dollar broke, briefly rose after the announcement, but fell back to 0.6930 in line with broader market moves. So there you have it, guys. That's You'll often see that when you get an interest rate rise. It starts to move in the direction you expect, and then it retraces itself. So always be careful of trading interest rate news, guys. The only time it will go in the direction that you would expect it to would be if it was a surprise. If they weren't expected to hike rates, and then they did hike rates, 
then you would see a massive move on that day, guys. But those are few and far between. Generally speaking, the banks don't like to uh, surprise the market. So um, you need to be careful trying to, you know, trade the news, as it were. Announcing this decision, RBNZ said further removal of monetary policy stimulus was expected and future moves depending on the medium term outlook for inflation and employment. OK, this is what we've been waiting for, guys. This is the start of it. There are a few other uh, cur- um, um, there it is there. Norway, Czech Republic and South Korea have already raised rates. So last year and the year before, it was cut rates, supply money, keep the world economy going through the lockdown. And then we start and, and basically currencies became very difficult to predict, guys. Um, you know, after the initial drop and, and recovery, after that, it became difficult to predict them. Um, and now we're starting to see some sense of normality returning where you can start to see what the economies individually look like and whether you suspect that they're going to have to increase their interest rates or they're going to decrease them or whatever it may be, which always gives you the fundamental direction for your currency, guys. And then we use the charts and Elliott Wave, etc., to find our entry points because obviously nothing goes in a straight line, guys. You're always looking for a correction as a setup to get into something. So there we are. That's the first news story I'm going to look at. The second one is this. The ongoing surge in U.S. Treasury yields, yields, sorry, the headline is U.S. dollar probes, a fresh multi-month high Treasury yields rally on inflation fears. The ongoing surge in U.S. Tre- Treasury yields, uh, the 10-year nominal is now quoted at 1.55%. is pushing the green back higher with the U.S. dollar basket DXY. Uh, within touching distance of levels last seen in September 2020. In addition to the heightened inflation fle- inflation fears, uh, the latest U.S. job report is released on Friday. That's what we talked about, non-farm payrolls, with expectations that the Fed will finally announce a formal timetable for scaling back its bond-buying program, guys. That's the important thing. Now, it's not just as simple as that, because obviously there are other influences, uh, other factors, because DXY is a basket, guys, a basket of all, uh, of of six of the, is it six? Yeah, I think it's six of the um, United States major trading partners. Of course, China's not in there. It's a bit old now. There there are um, other index dollar indexes but we use dxy guys but dxy covers the euro which is basically most of europe the pound obviously the uk uh the yen japan we've got the swiss franc in there we've got the swedish krona i think oh it's a long time since i looked at it one two three four five oh what's the other one I can't remember off the top of my head, guys. Let me just pause you and, and cover that in case any of you don't know what it is. And with the wonder of Google, uh, Euro, Japanese, yen, British, oh, Canadian dollar. That was the other Swedish, Corona, yeah, and the Swiss francs. So I got uh, five out of the six. So there they are, guys. Okay, let's get on with it. Right, so let's get on to the charts. Uh, pound, Euro, uh, let's move along there. Let's just go to the top and we'll work our way down through. Japanese yen has started to fall as I expected. I'm hoping that it will continue to drop, folks. DXY has moved long. Now, I'm calling it long. There's our trend. I will start to neaten these up a little bit and post them on trading view, guys. But for now, we're doing the quick, easy, simple way. There's our trend. And then we had this draw drawback. We talked at length yesterday about how a zigzag looks. So often you need to be careful going long there. We did say it doesn't mean that it won't go long, but it is always a dangerous place to try and go long when you've got something like that, guys. If this had to come down in a three, in other words, if that had been a one, two, three, then certainly you could go long there. But the fact that that was a five made it a little bit difficult to justify going long there. Uh, would rather have saw it come to there, and then you would have traded long with a 
higher degree of probability or even down to a little double bottom there and off from there. As it turns out, and this shows you the limitations of technical analysis, guys, but technical analysis will, uh, as much as show you where to get involved, it will also show you where it's dangerous to get involved and therefore you should leave it alone. In this instance, it was the wrong play. Um, but nonetheless, that doesn't mean that there weren't setups on the major pairs. So we'll have a look at those in a moment. So we've moved up. We're on a little double top. Yet again, be, be very wary of double tops, guys. It should push up through here, but it won't be a place to get involved because it'll peter out and it'll drop again. And then from there, we can look at maybe we've got a new trend here. And then we'll look to trade her on up, guys. And at some point in the next quarter, the dollar will reach its crescendo and then it will start to drop. But we're not there yet. At the moment, we're trading the dollar long or looking for opportunities to trade the dollar long. Yet again, yesterday, we said that um, this would drop. Was looking for one more up before it went. Of course, if you got in there and traded it in such a way that, um, you know, you gave yourself plenty of wriggle room, don't get too tight on your your stop losses, then certainly you could take that and then maybe add to the position again if it if it went long. And then when it comes down, you you know you, you double up on your situation. Unless you only put half on there guys and then another half there, depending on what your trading strategy is. Either way, so far as the trend's concerned, we've got that correct. Uh pound same thing started to drop against the US dollar. Um, same with the Aussie. We've had that push down. Should continue, guys. But yet again, as we said, may continue on down today and then you'll get a pullback and then it'll go again if that's what it's going to do. New Zealand, well, there you have it. Despite the fact that the New Zealand dollar, there's the little spike up there, guys. I don't know if that's the exact timing of it, but it sure looks like it would have been 2 o'clock this morning. 1 o'clock, guys. 1 o'clock. So, so it started to move up before the announcement, and then bang, down it came, and then off it's gone. So that's with them increasing their interest rate. It should go in the opposite direction. But it's been priced in, guys, and we did talk about that, about it being priced in. So what's next? Same as the rest. Potentially it'll push on down, then it'll pull back, and then if the dollar's going to continue to rise, then particularly if we see uh, good numbers on Friday, so far as uh, payrolls are concerned, because good numbers takes the, the onus off the Fed to continue to support um, you know, unemployed people and having people in furlough and all that sort of thing. So, um, and I'm not entirely sure what the system is in the United States. I know the system in the UK, but it's obviously I live here. But they'll all they'll all have different names for the same thing, guys. You're um, you're waiting for your employment numbers to come back up. The UK itself actually cut its um, furlough scheme this month. And the big fear now is that you could end up with a million people unemployed off the back of it. Um, but the, the message from the government is, is kind of, right, you've had your fun. Get off your behind and get back to work. Um, US CAD. Yeah, there's a little push up in, in the US against the CAD guys. But I'm a little wary of this one because with the, the increase in the uh, oil price, um, I'm expecting long on, on, on the CAD as well. And then it becomes a little bit difficult to predict. So I'll leave that one alone. US, uh, Swedish, yeah, well, it's gone to where we expected. Just went a little bit sooner than, than you know, I was hoping maybe a little bit more down to it. But yet again, guys, if you got involved there, and if you, li if, if you listen to me on a daily basis, you'll soon pick this up. You'll soon pick it up, guys, and adjust your trading strategy accordingly. So we're looking for it to go long, but potentially you could get in there. But if you're really, you know, trying to find the the moment, as it were, then wait for it to come back down in the trend. As it is, what you'll often find with trend, I'm talking to anyone who's new to charting, guys, you'll often find trend goes like that and then it takes off. So initially you have... That's your trend line. And then eventually you have to sharpen it up a little bit. 
not to that because this will always correct this will come down and when it goes again then there's your train your new train line with that being your original and there's your new train line guys so from this chart that was our original train line coming up through there don't worry about trading and putting them in exact guys at the end of the day all it is is a line to help your eyes see where this is going guys uh, an awful lot of people spend an awful lot of time you know having these exact and and then when it comes to the goal oh, it's time to go look no not necessarily time to go long when that happens guys but we'll you'll pick up on this as we go along okay so off we go on. That's possibly a new trend line. So I would look for this whenever it finishes going long to come back down into there and then we'll look for the next one up, guys. Uh, yen. It's a little hook there on the yen. Hmm. So I just had a drink of cough there, guys. Not entirely sure where that's come from. Because that hook there is short at the end. And if we go back to that, that's long the end, short the dollar. There's the move from yesterday anyway, guys. We were looking for it to go long yet again, which is the timing of it. Um, sometimes we get them bang on, guys. And and sometimes I'm a little bit too wary. Uh, US Swiss, from way back here, we were looking for a pullback. That's what we got it, it, Took a dive there, and then we started to come back up again. Um, hasn't quite moved overnight the way DXY has and the way the other currency pair has. The biggest constituent to DXY is the euro, folks. It's 57%. And therefore, if the euro goes short against the dollar, you will see that bigger move on DXY. But then you go and look at the other constituents, and, and you find... Sometimes the likes of this just as, as equally as a bigger move, but often you'll see a smaller move, like for example the Swiss. Now the Swiss hasn't moved that much. Let's just look at this from um let's just get the timing of this guys. Where did this really start to take off? From here to where it's which was six o'clock this morning. And we go to US Swiss. Seven o'clock, there's six o'clock. So the Swiss is um, strengthening, which means that this chart isn't taking off, guys. Okay. Uh, gold. Still unsure what, what's going on with gold, guys. Listen, everyone will start talking about gold, and then we'll know. At the minute, no one's all that interested in gold, guys. If you look at that structure, you look at that structure, you look at that, you look at that. This looks, for me, like it's getting ready to drop again. Can it break out? Yes, it can. But with the dollar going long, it should bring the price of gold down purely and simply off the basis that you're getting more gold for your, for your dollar. So the price should come off, not dramatically, but it would certainly limit its upside risk. Uh, or not risk, upside potential, guys. And the other thing about it is with bond rates going up, a lot of money will get into American bonds, which is also part of the reason that the dollar is going long rather than going into gold. If the stock markets start to come under pressure, you may see some upside to the gold, to gold. Not if there's a crash, but just a slow, gradual downward grind, which, to be honest, is what we're having at the minute. We've been having it for the last two or three months, guys. But for some reason, gold hasn't responded. Bitcoin, on the other hand, at the moment, is responding. We've had this nice move up, another push up there. Um, is that the all time? That's 52,000, all time high 64, is it? Something around there. There's a bit of a way to go to get to the all time high. Uh, maybe flashed up against 65,000 at one point, guys. Is this the start of a return back to those levels? It is possibly, but yet again, that wouldn't be a place for me to get involved. Down there, yes. But what I kind of looked at at the time was that because of this structure, for me, it looked like possibly it could come down to there, and therefore that would be a great place to buy. Remember, 
I'm not necessarily getting the predictions right all the time. What we're looking for, and that's not what the analysis is about, because it's a it's a futile uh, thing to do, guys, if you think you're going to get it right all the time. What you need to do is look at it and say, at what point would it be worth my while taking a risk at buying this or selling this, whatever direction you want to go? And, and for me, that would have been there. We did talk about this yesterday, about the return that you're going to get on Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, it's not going to be what it, what it has been in the past, unless it was to go to $100,000 in a very short piece, period of time. The big money was when it was worth nothing, and all of a sudden it came up to twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars, guys. That's when you can become rich and um, trading these things. Other than that, it's just a grind like everything else, guys. You're looking to earn a few percent of your account, risk a few percent, depending on what your trading strategy is. But if you want to be in the game a long time, risk a few percent, take your reward, take your you know your gain. And then look for something else. Um, if you're trading stocks, there's slightly different in that you can hold on to them for the long term, um, because generally speaking, they go in a, in one direction because inflation would push them in that direction. Unless you're on to a dud, but then that's about trading high risk uh, stocks or investing in high risk stocks versus blue chips, as they're called. Okay, Ethereum, it's come off a little bit this morning by the looks of it. But it's also had that big push up. You could off almost, you know, uh, take that Bitcoin chart, that structure there. Um, where's my copy? Oh, that's not what I'm after. Oh, come on, folks. Let me pause. Okay, here it is. Uh, oops. Where are we? That's the one we want. You copy that. Go over to here. And paste it. Look at the similarities there, guys. You know, you had your drop. It pushed up, dropped again, ran flat, and then accelerated up. And if we just do that a little bit you can see it see the similarities there guys now at the moment but uh, bitcoin's pushed on up ethereum's pulling back now i expect ethereum to pull back here guys because that looks to me like an ending diagonal underneath all of that all of that so let's just um which doesn't necessarily change trend let's get rid of that as well for now Mm, yeah, it's 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 not a perfect ending diagonal, guys. But um, you wouldn't argue against it, would you? Ending diagonal being comes up, 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 and then you get a drop, and then depending on what trend is, either that would be your signal to short if trend was in that direction, or let it drop and then buy in again if trends in that direction. Now, at the moment, I get the feeling that the trend's short, but I could be wrong, folks. I'm just looking at this overall zigzag here, and I'm just saying, is it over? Is it finished? And if not, then, you know, you could see this coming down. And if it come down maybe into there or even lower before going long again, then that would be the place for me to buy. I'd not be buying Ethereum at this. Can it go long? Certainly, it can do what it wants. It could push on up from here. But... With the the risk that it could drop to here versus the reward of it. Oops. So there we go with that one. Oil. It's pushed on up yet again, guys. It's getting away from that trend. Let's just go out a little bit and see where our trend is. Yeah, that, that was a, yeah, that was a trend. You could probably pull that back. Listen, you're not interested in going right back to there. There was zero in and around there somewhere, guys. I remember that. I lost money in that. It, when oil dropped down to here, I thought, well, I can't go to zero. So I bought it. And the next day it went flash, crash. 
lost money and gave up on it and then it did this <laughs> but there you go one two three one two three. i'm just wondering if there's a five wave in there not yet this could be the fifth wave here guys it's not obvious and i don't want to waste time starting to do that analysis is that one two it doesn't look as if it works out at the moment it's easy to say to three, four, and then a fifth, but then you have to start working out why there's three waves in there, which isn't right. So then you need to go back and do a bit more analysis. It's not worth it. We know oil's going up, guys. So oil will push on up, and then obviously it'll correct for a while or run flat. Um, how high will it go? Well, there are people calling it to $100. I wouldn't argue against that, guys. It could well push on up to $100. And then maybe from there it comes off and runs flat. Could even come back down into there. But that would be into, you know, the start of spring, maybe next year, into 2022. Um, EuroCAD. Yep, let's continue to push on down. Let's get this into the one-hour time scale. Continue to push on down as expected. I don't know if there's a trade there or not, guys. Euro was, um, I took this yesterday. Um, I need to get into the routine of, of putting charts out and doing little recordings of, of my trades. I will do it, guys. Just, you know, getting back into this. You need to really tune into it and then be on it all day long, guys. And then just make it a routine. Um, so, yeah, it was doing okay. It dropped down here and then it flashed back up. We're around zero at the minute. I'm just hoping this continues to push down. With And the reason for that is um, I was looking at the, at the dollar go long there from looking at the euro go short. And on top of that, with the uh, what we were talking about there in that news story, I don't want to go back to it. But they're saying that uh, Australia will be looking to increase their interest rates going forward and tapering. So um, at some point, I could see more strength in the euro. Uh, euro New Zealand. Now, there was the surprise that the New Zealand took off in the wrong direction. It doesn't mean that that's, you know, going to keep running, guys. Um, I would just be wary of it. it. It could just end up continuing to you know run something like that which is okay if you got in the wrong direction there because at some point you should be able to get your money back uh, euro yen well that's a surprise that's a surprise us yen there's that little pull back there euro yen but when you look at the index there's no indication of that because remember this is the index the whole thing that's it getting weaker but because we're in the base this it ends on the base here that's it getting stronger so i'm a little bit confused by that guys euro swiss there's the euro getting stronger is this a sudden move to, to, uh, to safety? Pound CAD, not going anywhere. Pound Oz, it's pushing up, but I wouldn't uh, trade that at the minute. Pound New Zealand, that's the weakness in the New Zealand. I was expecting it to go the other way. Um, I wouldn't expect that to go much further up. I could do, but I'm not looking for it. But if you look at that, guys, listen, it could be the start of a breakout, but I don't have much faith in the pound at the moment, so I wouldn't be surprised if this, you know, end up continuing something like that. Pound Swiss. Um, there's the little move to safety yet again in the Swiss. I would, um, looking at this structure, I would not be surprised if this pushed on down into there i took it short from around here yesterday guys it pushed long on me and now we're back in the green i'm hoping that this pushes on down pound euro
It's running flat. I'm surprised if it broke that top, guys, so I wouldn't try and trade it. Pound yen, yet again, there's that little potential move to safety. Don't want to read too much into it, guys, because if, if you look at it, you, you get moves like this all over the place. So there isn't always a big reason for something. But what we're looking at for is the start of something. Um, But I was looking for the end to continue to drop. So I'm not entirely sure about that, which is the reason why I'm focusing on it. And then yet again, there's that pull back against the, um, against the Aussie. L was looking for this to go long. It was that the long that I was looking for? I can't really remember. We'll clean these up, guys. Uh, try and clean these up on a daily basis. Um, not sure about that, guys. I, I would be looking for upside to the to the Aussie. Um, you know, it could end up doing something like that. Just bouncing around here for a bit, and then we start to see the upside to the Aussie. Aussie New Zealand. Well, there you have it, guys. That's what we were calling earlier in the week. And then when we started talking about the expectations that um, uh, the New Zealand um, Reserve Bank were going to increase interest rates, I thought, oh, my goodness. I can't possibly try and trade that long with that coming up. And there you have it. It still went long, guys. But but we did talk about this yesterday, and that was said that, you know, that interest rate hike could well be priced in, which would have explained the reason why this just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. Where was that? It was July. Where was that? That was August. I'm wondering if there was any specific reason for those two uh, tight moves um so there you have it i suspect this will continue to move on up not too much further guys because if this is um it's not a great impulse up there guys but when, uh, let's just say that that's your your break up and there's some sort of correction in there possible third wave possible fourth wave it'll go up it'll not be much bigger than than this structure um, I don't think and then you'll get some sort of correction and then from there that would be a good place to look to start to trade it long now if you don't want to wait for all of that and you want to take the risk then you trade it long here and if it keeps going you're in but you may end up in a, a pullback that could last a few weeks and then it becomes frustrating, guys. So that's the reason that we, I wait for the setups. There's lots and lots of things to trade. And if you miss some, it doesn't matter. Uh, Aussie Swiss. Yet again, there's that pullback in the Swiss, guys. Um, but look at it recently. That's, that's the market can't make a decision about where it's going. Here they were very decisive. There they were very decisive. And since September, you don't really want to be trading that. The only thing I would say was from a technical point of view, it looks like it wants to do that. So if there is going to be a move into safety, you could get that before the Aussie um, Reserve Bank starts. The Aussie Reserve Bank. The Reserve Bank of Australia starts to taper, starts to increase their interest rates, and then you could see a move up that way. So possibly there's a, a there's a short in there. I'm not convinced by it at the minute. Aussie CAD, I don't like to trade this pair set every day. Um, Swiss yen. Well, there's that little hook back again on the Swiss. Uh, we did say yesterday, don't be trying to go long at, at a double top with that, guys. Wait and see if it pulls back again, and then that would be your trade up. CAD Swiss. I did take this long yesterday um, and went into the green and I think I'm coming back down into zero again. It possibly wasn't the best place to take it. Well, it wasn't. There's no possibly about it. Um, but I'm a little bit emotionally attached to this pair because I do so well in it or I have done well in it in the past, guys. 
So maybe just wanted to get that going again. I might just get out of it until we see where it's going. I'm a little bit wary that the Swiss could strengthen up and pull it back down again. Um, it wouldn't be the end of the world because I think at some point it will come back up. But I wouldn't want to spend two months sitting in the red with it or whatever length of time that that would be. The possible close out. Uh, CAD yen. There's the pull back again. But I do, yet again, This if this is a move to safety, and I'll not know until I go and start looking at the, 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 um, at the stock markets, guys. But if this is a move to safety, wouldn't be surprised a bit more to it, and then off it goes again. But yet again, I'm still... I'm still bamboozled by this. Because that's it going short. But in all of those, the end going long. Is this live? I don't know. I don't understand what's going on with this, guys. If, if I get to understand it, I'll tell you. Um, did we miss anything? Out? New Zealand yen dropped like a stone yesterday, despite the fact we were looking for it to push on up. Did I say that I shorted this? I did. We did. We talked about that, didn't we? Uh, New Zealand yen. New Zealand CAD. There's the New Zealand going short against the CAD. And New Zealand Swiss. Well, there's it going off in the wrong direction for what I was looking for. So if you look at this, we fib this here, guys. 100% to there, it's pulled back to 50%. If it comes down, maybe into the 60, 61, and then starts to come up, maybe that's a better place to start looking for a trade. But we'll find out what's going on with the Swiss in the end, guys. And then we'll know for, hopefully for tomorrow, the reason why they've all moved in the opposite direction of what we were looking for. Okay, guys, that'll do for the day. I'll speak to you all again tomorrow. Bye for now.